years. Hello, welcome. Thank you for being with us today. We're broadcasting live from uh, Park City, Utah, where I am, which, uh, as many of you know, I am hanging out here for most of the summer. Uh, we have uh, Phil in New York City, I believe, and Brian in uh, New York, and Sharon's in Miami. So uh, big thank you to somebody who's on the screen here. Um, Brian and I have known each other for quite a long period of time, being friends and colleagues. And uh, he's kindly introduced me to uh, Phil and Sharon and Blockchain TV. So we're super happy to have a Luminary Series discussion about uh, what the effort's all about. And uh, uh, as you know, we can't hear or see you. We know you're there. And we encourage you to ask questions through the Q&A in the chat uh, box. Uh, we're we have a bunch of folks coming on today, so we're happy to get to as many as possible. Um, uh, if there's anybody that in your world that after you uh, participate today, you think would benefit from knowing more, we're totally happy to make sure everybody gets in touch with uh, 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 Phil and Brian and Sharon directly. So, you know, as you know, Family Office Insights stays out of the way and make sure that you can connect directly with them. And we encourage you to do that. Um, if it's OK with you, Phil, I think we're going to record this and. Uh, you can edit it and we can post it on the Family Office Insights YouTube channel or you could post it somewhere on your site. But uh, just in case some of the group wants to share it with others, uh, uh, maybe after an edit, we can we can do that as well. So uh, with that, thanks, everybody, for being with us this afternoon or this morning. Um, uh, and uh, Phil, you want to take it away? Sure. Thank you, Arthur. I uh, appreciate it. And thank you all for joining us today to hear our story. A um, little bit of background, I am uh, Philip Falcone. I am the founder and one of the creators of uh, this platform. And uh, I've had a uh, history of being an investor in both telecom media, as well as a uh, number of other areas in the, uh, in the marketplace for the last uh, 20, 25, 30 years. Um, with me today, I have two individuals from the team, Sharon Noller, our COO and resident blockchain expert, and Brian Hogan, who is our uh, on the marketing side. Um, so if the two of you could give a little back brief background on yourselves, that would be great. Then we can kick it off. Sure. Sharon? Hi, everybody. Um, nice to meet you all. Uh, my name is Sharon. Um, I got into this project uh, with Phil uh, because I think it's really going to be a game changer to this industry. Uh, I've been in the blockchain slash crypto space for a little over 10 years. Um, I have many experience working with other family offices to raise capital for many different projects. Um, in order to be able to do this um, in the best way possible, um, compliantly, um, from a marketing perspective, uh, from a tech perspective. Um, I've developed software myself, uh, blockchain-based payment solutions. Um, I have also uh, created a very big uh, marketing uh, and strategy firm here in the States uh, to help Web3 uh, and blockchain projects, whether they're startups, uh, or whether they're publicly traded companies. Uh, I'm very happy to be here today. I'm very happy to join the team um, and feel free to ask uh, any questions. Great, thanks, Brian. Hi, uh, thank you everyone for joining. My name is Brian Hogan. Um, I'm based here in New York City. I've been in the luxury sector, manufacturing uh, in the fashion business for, for 30 years, also as an investor, uh, basically bringing European brands to the States. Um, I got involved in uh, in crypto um, through a, a friend of ours about ten years ago. I was interest, uh, introduced to um, uh, to the blockchain and became very interested in it. Um, I am an investor in this, and to me, this is an, an incredible opportunity uh, to explain blockchain. TV Phil will get more into it, and Sharon, and I just see this as. Uh, a really, really interesting moment for us. And uh, we're happy to be here today. Thank you. 
Great. Thanks, guys. Phil, um, maybe we can start out by uh, chatting a little bit about what, how this came about and what is it that you're trying to accomplish. I think that many people feel, you know, there's a lot of people in the Family Office Insights community that have been in the crypto or blockchain business from the onset, uh, but there's many that are still uh, testing the waters and everywhere in between. Um, and it's a, in some view, uh, is an arcane subject or some uh, a little bit difficult to put your head around. What was what's the impetus and and your design for blockchain TV? Well, well, there's really two aspects to this. I mean, one is the platform in and of itself from a decentralization perspective, and I'll get a little bit more into that um, a bit later. But there's the platform, and then there's the information that uh, will be delivered and uploaded to the platform. And this platform is really designed to um, democratize the entire process of how people are viewing content, how viewers are participating on, on that platform, how creators or contributors and curators are participating on that platform. So you have to think about this as a um, essentially a decentralized content platform. Um, when I say decentralized, it's really governed by the uh, participants. The economics are shared via micropayments along with uh, across the board between viewers, curators, creators, et cetera. Um, there's uh, governance is really run by the by the um, the participants, but the whole real strategy around this is we see a change in the marketplace as to how people are viewing uh, content and what's happening with the content between censor between censorship between um, uh, the clutter that's out in the marketplace and. As we like to say, if you're watching the product for free, you are the product. You look at, at centralized projects like Instagram or YouTube or, um, you, I mean, you name it, they're, um, people are watching hours and hours and hours. And what is the product? The product are the, the creators. The product are the viewers. The product are the participants. And... I think there's a major shift taking place in the marketplace that we will see. I think we're in, in the infancy, but I think people are starting to realize that from a censorship perspective, you're only viewing what that editorial staff is interested in you seeing. Um, and also from an economic perspective, the, 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 the bulk of the pie is shared by, you know, a select group of, of, of curators or creators, and there's no transparency in payments and what people are making and how they're making it. Um, what we're doing and what we're attempting to create, I shouldn't say attempting, but what we've created is really a platform um, to democratize the entire process. I think you're gonna see more and more and more of this I think there's a major shift in the marketplace. I think we're early, um, but it's better to be early than late. Um, I think that uh, you're seeing various um, entities pop up in the marketplace that are decentralized, that are controlled by the community. Um, I don't think there's anybody out there that's doing um, from a comprehensive perspective of what we're doing of, of governance, uh, economics, um, uh, distribution, um, kind of all collective. There are entities out there that have created sites for governance or censorship. There are other sites that have been created for micro micro payments. 
um, we're, 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 what we've done is we've encompassed all of the nuances um, from a decentralized perspective. And when I talk about that, that's really based on the blockchain technology. It's, it's, uh, the platform is, is based around the blockchain technology. Our objective is to start out with um, information around the blockchain space and then expanding to um, to across all all areas of uh, all genres in the content viewing or uh, digital space. Um, so it's been a, a a long process for us from getting to from point A to point B. Um, you know, I've been working on this for a while, and it really started uh, a number of years ago when I was trying to dig out information in blockchain. And I realized that um, there was no one central authority. There was no um, credibility around a lot of the content. So we started focusing on, on putting together en masse the, the content out into the, um, what was available in the marketplace and trying to determine if there was a, um, an opportunity for the community uh, in the blockchain space, really building building a community, creating a community. And then it really expanded beyond that as we saw some of the, as I really studied and we studied the pitfalls of some of the centralized uh, projects in the space um, from the control of Instagram, from the control of Facebook, from the control of, of Twitter. You know, they're all, they're all centralized. They all determine what should be seen, what shouldn't be seen. They control the payments, they control um, um, every aspect to it. And especially from a viewer perspective, you know, you could be sitting and watching for hours upon hours, which people do. And it's, it's, you know, those people, or I should say the, uh, the people in general are the product. They should be participating in the economics. And that is when we started really zeroing in on what we could do with blockchain technology. You, you have to utilize and build out the platform around blockchain technology to do what we're doing. Yeah, I mean, you couldn't do this 10, 15 years ago, um, but really utilizing the blockchain technology and the ledger system as, um, as the platform will allow us and allow um, uh, the platform to, to um, to, to be managed accordingly. So it's been in a number of iterations over the past two to three years of where we were and ending up where we are now. But we think there's a, there's a huge opportunity in, um, in uh, the decentralized platform. We think that uh, it's, a, um, it's the future. Um, you're seeing people starting to do it right now. Um, I think we're, um, I don't want to say early, but we are on the cutting edge of what I think is going to be a landslide of opportunity as, uh, as the whole digital space, you know, continues to evolve. You know, you're seeing issues with some of the big um, social media companies today um, and complaints. And I think it's just a matter of time before people embrace the whole decentralized aspect of uh, of what can be done on the digital side. Would you say, Phil, that for example, and and let's just uh, you know we've had a historic congressional hearing on censorship last week, which is super interesting. I think to people who are paying attention, um, and it's and it's clear that censorship is happening. It's not a political statement. It's just pretty obvious. But the the content providers now that I think are typically delivering to the blockchain or crypto community is you know Discord or um, 
what's the other one that uh, a lot of people read it read it but there's another one um uh i just had it but uh, anyway so if you were to uh give an example of what type of content you expect to deliver can we talk a little bit about that yeah i mean i think we when we started out the this project we were um thinking about specifically crypto nft metaverse web3 and really building a community around that um because there's um a lot of that content is not validated. It's coming from bloggers. Um, it's coming from um, unvetted sources. So when you think about, um, you know, if there's a, a, a bad storm coming into your, uh, into your region, you turn on the weather channel. If the stock market's kind of falling apart, you go to, uh, CNN or CNBC. Now, there are uh, traditionally um, a number of bloggers and information out there in the marketplace about blockchain TV, but there's no one central authority. So that's really where this started of really creating a community around the blockchain space. And the more we got, or the blockchain um, um, the, the aspects of blockchain, crypto, NFT, Web3, metaverse. The more we got into it, however, the more we realized there was a bigger opportunity and that content will um, ultimately expand to, um, you know, a content that's uh, out there on YouTube or- um, And not be censored. Like it's important to say that because talking to the how you started out that question, statistically, most people who even create videos on YouTube, etc., they might be taken down for their regulations, right? Because they are a centralized uh, authority or entity. So you can build your entire reputation, right, on a certain platform, and it can be taken away like this. And that's kind of the main focus and the shift of what we're trying to do here so that, you know, that doesn't happen to anybody on our platform specifically. And that's what will migrate all of those users, whether they are doing crypto or blockchain content or any other content. So it's important to say that from a censorship perspective. Yeah, I mean, when you, when you think about um, the opportunity, it's it's across the board, whether it's in blockchain or whether it's, you know, what you're doing on a day to day basis, we're going to give creators the opportunity to create their own channel um, and to deliver and to upload um, whatever content they ultimately want. Now, we have um, uh, obviously you have to categorize and validate and so on and so forth to make sure things are um, um, delivered to the appropriate party who is viewing the content, but it is content from across the board. And when you think about the problems in the, um, in the industry, um, from a creator monetization perspective, um, from a content moderation perspective, from a creator ownership perspective, as Sharon mentioned, um, once you upload something, you cease to be the owner. And um, even the major industries between film and TV, the piracy that takes place, the one way to solve that problem is on a distributed ledger from a distributed ledger perspective where it cannot be pirated. So there's a lot of dynamics to this decentralized platform that are targeting the various issues in the marketplace. Um, and you know what our objective is, is to, 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 to first start out um, around crypto, NFT, Web3, um, 
blockchain technology, there's a number of different applications that one can um, apply um, in the blockchain space that I think people are not necessarily focused on today, but it's going to the masses. It's happening. You see companies like BlackRock and Fidelity now getting involved in Bitcoin. You see JP Morgan um, creating a whole unit around tokenization. It, it, we're in the first inning of this, the top of the first inning. So that's why we initially started thinking about not only the decentralized platform, but that community and expanding it across the board to essentially every dynamic in the, in the, in the digital content space. I mean, that's how big the opportunity is here. And, um, you know, we've been working very closely with a group, with a, a team of blockchain engineers who've designed this thing for us. Um, so we think that, uh, um, you know, not only that, we're also going to touch on the, uh, on, the, on the AI space and see what we can do around that because there's a lot of excitement. Um, and that, that's not just a buzzword that we're using, but we're even testing um, creating news shows with, uh, with AI and how that would look. So um, I guess that's the, 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 the long-winded answer to your question about what type of content. It is going to be a platform that you go to like a YouTube, like an Instagram, um, like a Facebook, where creators will have their channels of content that they've created, where curators will utilize other third-party content and put their own channel together. Um, it could be um, businesses or companies or entities that uh, have produced uh, films or uh, short films or long films that want to uh, want a new platform. Um, so that's the, that's the rationale behind this to hopefully start with blockchain, um, basic blockchain, uh, crypto NFT, Web3, Metaverse, and then expand. But I think it's going to expand a lot quicker than what we expected just from discussions we've had with people, um, various creators out there in the marketplace who are quite frankly looking for something new because of the censorship, looking for something new because of the economic distribution um, and looking for something new with um, because of the clutter. I mean, you go to YouTube today, try to find something of interest and it takes you three hours. Um, so that's the, that's the mindset around what we're doing and the platform. One of the things that uh, seemingly is a complaint across the board from influencers and creators is that they build their uh, customer base on these platforms where they don't own and know any information about their uh, uh, followers, let's just say. And so the data associated with their followers is owned by Instagram, Facebook, et cetera, et cetera. And so they don't really own their clients or their customers or their followers. And so that uh, I've just seen, I'm not an expert at this, of course, or expert at anything for that. Matter, Phil, I'd, but... I'd like to touch on that if you if you let me. Yeah, we go ahead. have actually recently um, partnered uh, with another company for us to be able to solve a lot of the issues that you just uh, discussed. So we can also, you know, verify the authenticity of these users, because actually to counter what you just said, a lot of, you know, advertisers or partners who are trying to work with these influencers or find these influencers, I mean, they're going based off of either the amount of followers, right? And that's basically what they're paying for. So another um, another option within our platform is to be able to actually validate the users. 
uh, and to go through um, a type of KYC. So we know that this person who is getting paid for usage or for validating or for whatever it may be is actually a person. And that, you know, look at it as a whole economic system, right? And monetization and how that flows, whether it's from the person who's paying for the ad or the person who is actually doing the ad, the influencer, how they're monetizing that. Um, also, another feature is being able to do things compliantly. Most influencers, they partner you know, with other companies or advertisers, and they don't know what they need to do um, when they are advertising a specific product. So there are, are a ton of different features that we can utilize the blockchain technology um, to make this space much better. So I think the, from how we started, right, and what Bill is talking about, to um, the blockchain space, and maybe some people think that that might be a little bit niche, we're coming to find out that it's not just going to be that. And this is how all of these different influencers or content creators um, or anybody in the digital media space is going to use um, this platform and the tools that we are giving um, this industry. And that's a huge game changer from every single part uh, of this ecosystem. But I, I, I agree. I think, Arthur, you touched on a very critical point where um, the one central, the central authorities really control everything. What, what, what our platform is going to allow, as Sharon mentioned, um, really, are they, are, from an advertising perspective, are the viewers real? Who are the viewers? Um, now, people will be able to lots of ro robots you know just the yeah. whole you know yeah. fraud people will be able to opt in and opt out but a lot of it will be giving the influencer or the creator as we say um direct contact with the advertiser and and really from a peer to peer system i mean that does not exist today um on platforms, on these centralized platforms, because all advertisers go through the central authority and are controlled. This is an opportunity for somebody to say, no, I don't want you know, General Motors to advertise, but I do want Tide. You know, that's their choice. And um, giving that control to the creator and to the influencer I think will be game changing, um, and and adding AI that buzzword that you said to utilize AI so that we can get the right content in front of the right audience based off of their participation and what we're seeing that they are viewing or seeing or liking. That way we can make that monetization much much bigger. So it's essentially taking everything you know from web to world and just making it much more efficient um, at the end of the day. How, how do you uh, expect it to be delivered? Meaning uh, it's gonna be in the uh, on the internet obviously, but are, how are you gonna deliver the, 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 the show, Blockchain TV? You know, what platform are you gonna use? You're gonna create your own platform on the, Internet. I'm just, it might be too much in the weeds, but I'm just wondering, it's not going to be terrestrial TV. It's going to be uh, internet delivered TV. Is that right? Well, yeah. I mean, this is what we're really focused on is a, um, is a platform like a YouTube, like a Facebook, like a, any website that delivers video content today we're going to have that web interface. We're going to have the, the app interface. Um, we are, sorry, um, we are going to have, it's my daughter calling me. Um, we are going to have- um, Take it, Phil, take your daughter's call, it'll be all right. <laughs> no, it's okay. Um, uh, she probably wants me to give her like her morning coffee or something like that. So, um, but the, 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 uh, there's really two parts to this. It is the, the platform um, that will be web-based, that will be um, like an app. 
Um, and of course, what we haven't touched on is the other dynamic that we're doing from a delivery of the content that we're both creating um, as well as the contributors are creating and delivering that um, to the cable and television community. So that's, that's, a, that's a whole other part of how we're thinking about this, giving the influencers and the creators that are, um, that are creating quality content, um, taking that content and delivering it um, globally, or especially in the US, you know, on a cable channel. You know, that's, that's kind of phase two as to how we're thinking about this phase. The key is building out the platform. The key is um, um, creating a, um, a distribution platform where creators and influencers can upload their content, can create their own channels. And then those, those, that content will be validated. That, that the validation of that content, depending on um, the parameters, um, we will give them an opportunity to, um, to participate in um, our broadcast channel, uh, our blockchain TV broadcast channel that we're also developing as part of this. So it's really taking that content create some in, in certain cases, creating our own content and packaging it and then delivering it um, to the masses. That's another, it's just another alternative distribution strategy for us. Um, but the key part is the, the decentralized platform where people will upload their content, um, where people will be spending a lot of time viewing. You know, there, there are people that still watch TV. Um, you know, there's 300 million people in the, in the country or 330 million people in the country. Not everybody goes to Twitter. Not everybody goes to Facebook. Not everybody goes to Instagram. I mean, I came from uh, the Midwest and I know people still watch TV. Um, it's, it's really um, attempting to, to hit all the distribution um, opportunity or all the all the different viewing habits of people um, and that's, well, that's, the, that's the dynamic around TV yeah super interesting it's just uh, uh, a side gig for me because I'm interested but you know for example Tucker Carlson had 120 million views on his first uh, Twitter episode and by all accounts, it doesn't even compare to what he had with terrestrial uh, cable TV in terms of reach. No. Right? So cable TV has reach. It has its issues, right? And and I'm not trying to uh, throw my opinion in all this, but terrestrial TV, people watch TV. It's like uh, it's NBC still has massive, massive reach to a lot of people. Um, so it's interesting to hear that you're going to be incorporating that. Um, is I don't want to oversimplify it, but for example, if a creator has content and they want people to pay them for it, and you put it on the blockchain, and so if they watch it, there is a micro payment that goes through the blockchain and goes to deposit into their account. Is that pretty much what you think would be happening? Y yes, we'll give people. We'll give creators the choice to do that. They will, they can create their own um, system where, from a sub, if they think their content is quality enough, and we'll get enough uh, 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 payments from subscription base, that's their choice. So it's really a hybrid. It's really about, you know, I keep saying democratization. I mean, this is about giving the participants their rights. You know, this is about giving the creators, the curators, the viewers, if you opt in to view an ad, guess what? You're gonna get paid for it. Shouldn't they? 
I mean, they're the ones spending the time watching the thing. Yeah, they're, yeah. Um, it's a much longer story, but uh, you know, you let you 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 probably are onto something, Phil. <laughs> yeah. Being that we've got Elon Musk, uh, Musk changing his company to X and deciding he wants to be like the Chinese app where you can do everything in the app and you can have a subscription button on your Twitter account. I mean, uh, you know, it's seemingly heading in a direction of something that's already scaled, but, you know, has its issues. Well, you know, when you see guys like um, the founder of Twitter, Jack Dorsey, um, investing in a decentralized Twitter and coming out with statements that it's the future. I mean, you know, I'm not a, I'm not uh, um, somebody who um, has a picture of Jack Dorsey on by my bedside, but um, you know, when I see things like that, I know we're on the right path. You know, he's invested in this uh, decentralized competitor to Twitter because of the censorship. And that's where he feels the biggest issue is in the marketplace. Well, we're doing that, but we're also encompassing, you know, many other of the problems that, that we know are out there. So I do believe we're on to something um, that is cutting edge, that is game changing, um that has a massive opportunity and you, go uh, ahead no i was just gonna uh, uh take one of the questions from the from the audience in the initial stages of gleaning interest from the creators and the influencers how, what what's your plan to onboard though what, how, how are you going to reach them so we've been in discussions and they're with a number of people. Now, I mean, that's a great question. And we have and are working on method, a method of, of compensation per se to um, for the first group of on, onboarding the first group. You know, there's a lot of frustrated creators out there that are that don't believe they're getting the right economics that don't believe they're getting the right um, um, coverage that their content is getting lost. Um, however, it's like Uber when they first started, what didn't they have? Drivers, what did they do? They had to compensate them. So we are defining the plan to have the first major group of comp really partnering with them um, from an economic and from an ownership perspective, really giving them, you know, hey, this is, this is a real opportunity. This is not about, you know, just, you know, a wing and a prayer, but there has to be, people follow the money I mean, my 35 years in the investment space, people follow money. It's all about economics. I don't care what people say. Um, it's all about yeah. economics. When somebody says it's not about the money, it usually is. <laughs> it, yeah, of course. Yeah, of course. And we feel like we've designed and created something that will excite a lot of people. Um, you know, creators and contributors um, that are, um, that have a lot of influence in the marketplace. They may not necessarily be the Kim Kardashians of the world that have 300 million Instagram followers, but guess what? There's a lot of other people out there besides, um, you know, that 1%. So um, creating a platform and giving them economic ownership um, is it a cost? Yes. But I think it's a sensible cost. I think it's a sensible thing to do. Um, 
And I think that we'll get, we'll get a whole hell of a lot of um, uh, momentum behind us with this plan that we've, um, we're designing. Karen, did you want to say also, Sorry, I want to build on top of that. It's not just the content creator who is at the front here. So you also have the validators, right? So that comes over. So number one thing people are searching, right, is how do you make money off of Bitcoin mining, for example, right? So all of those people who are trying to look for another source of income by validating, you are also getting another stream of income. So there's that, right? And then there's the users, okay, who they're also getting paid for their usage, right? And then once you have all of these users, even if they're not creating any content and all of these advertisers are seeing, well, hey, everybody's going here because everybody's making money. So all the advertisers are also gonna come there. I mean, even if you look at, you know, uh, TikTok, right? Why is everybody going there? Because the algorithm is very effective, right? And then people are getting a much bigger user base than what they would in Instagram. So there's, a lot of different features that are going to be in this platform that will bring over every single part of the ecosystem to this platform because currently it's missing from everything that is there. Every single platform is maybe catering to one specific thing, whereas we are taking on something by utilizing blockchain technology to target everybody in this ecosystem. Do you, do you think? Uh, so we're not accused of censoring censorship. What what do you what do you think? Uh, will so it's it's not conspiracy theory anymore. You know, uh, Zuckerberg went on Lex Friedman and said, "Yeah, the FBI told us to to, to to not publish that." Right. So this is not hearsay anymore. How how do you feel about? You know, it's impossible to predict what will happen but how, how do you feel about that being censored by the feds and how you're going to deal with that does you have you have you given much thought to that yeah i mean the reality of it is once content is on the blockchain it's on the blockchain i mean we don't control it now you can take it off your interface but it's still on the blockchain and that's not illegal. So that's the dynamic around decentralization. That's why you get people like Jack Dorsey and uh, endorsing it because of that. It's on the decentral on the distributed ledger system. Go and that's try. That's actually and one of the things that on. he couldn't he couldn't handle at Twitter. I mean, if you would have seen him two years ago at the Bitcoin conference, right when he left the company. I mean, it was insane, right? Because he is the one who founded this. He started this, but he has all of these, you know, people in the back telling him what to do. And that's not what he intended. Right. And then he was getting all of the backlash because he was in the front. Um, and that's, I think, why also he left. Right. And he's making this shift. And I think maybe Elon Musk, you know, is kind of trying to also enter that space, but he's taking on a lot more than he can chew. And we need a new player in the space can accommodate all of the things that that basically we're we're doing so I'm, I'm i'm looking at um one of the the his comment around one of the entities that he's created um the platform aims to provide a decentralized social network protocol which is expected to make its user data free from influence by any government or corporation that's those are the rules around blockchain. They want it shut down. Let you know. Go ahead and shut it down. Try. It can't be. It's on the blockchain. It's on the distributed ledger system. Yeah, immutable data. Which yeah, in this case, it's been validated by validators, right? And that's how it ends up. Just like you know, mining. Yeah, you know, the it's the same idea, right? Exactly. Yeah. That's the mining. The validating is the mining. Um, and that will be validated um, based on quality, based on the genre, based on the objective of what the viewer is 
attempting to find, you know, I go back to trying, you go on, I mean, you try to find something on YouTube. I mean, I, I spend, you know, two hours trying to find something that lasts a minute and a half. Yeah, and, uh, and have to watch three ads, right? Yeah, yeah, you have to watch three ads. You have to watch this. You have to do that. You yeah. know, people are, are getting exceeding, you know, the attention span of the average American now is a nanosecond. Um, and, you know, the, creating a system to where things are validated, where, where there's clarity, where there's transparency, I think will go a long way. Do you, do you intend to have the validators paid by fiat or a token? Um, we are, I mean, we are very encouraged with the result of the Ripple SEC lawsuit. We were kind of sitting on our hands um, with our fingers crossed on that. So I think that is going to give us a lot of flexibility around um, the um, tokenization of payments. Um, you know, that being said, um, I think fiat payments go a long way. Yeah. Yeah, it's probably, uh, look, how we measure the value of a token is we convert it to fiat, right? Exactly. So exactly. it still is, uh, you know, the the metric for which the value of a token is measured um, it, uh, on some level, and perhaps all the levels, but uh, it's beyond my scope. So um, how, how would uh, one get involved with you folks as an investor, blockchain TV, what's, what's the what's the path to discovering more and and uh, understanding, you know, how to deploy some capital into the project? Well, yeah, we we are raising capital right now for the platform. Um, we have a subscription agreement. We're looking at raising. Not a lot because our costs are very low. Um, we're looking at raising capital with a um, what we think is a very attractive valuation. You know, as I mentioned, we've been at this for quite some time. Um, you know, you typically see some startups putting a 50, 75 or 100 million valuation on it. Um, we're putting a 15 million valuation on it. Why? Because that's the capital that's put it, been put into this thing so far to get to where we are. So it's um, the valuation I think is very, very, very attractive. Um, we have um, a subscription agreement where people can participate. Um, this is... You know, I think we're early in the stage of raising capital, but I'm hopeful that we can get it done very quickly. Um, there's a lot of parties that have been um, interested parties kind of circling the wagons, a lot of interest around the Middle East, um, especially with the broadcasting um, aspect. But um, it's, it's, you know, very simple. We have a vehicle that um, we took control of a number of years ago that we've cleaned up. It's um, an OTC listed um, company on the pink sheets that we will ultimately uplist to um, NASDAQ. And the reason I did that is from a liquidity perspective, from a governance perspective, um, rather than you know waiting for the management team decide to decide when to go public or what to do with it this structure i believe will attract a lot more interest from an investment perspective because they could make up 
um, and wake up one day and make the determination that they want to sell. Yeah, there's it's liquidity. Ahead. Yeah, liquidity. Liquidity. Yeah. That's one of the key things in the marketplace today. So we have, you know, we have um, a subscription document. Um, we have a deck. Um, if people, I mean, I guess we have to work on how we communicate with interested parties that you've introduced us to that are listening to this today. Um, I'm happy to get on one-on-one -on -one calls with them and walk them through what the capital structure looks like, what we're doing in the Middle East with this, um, what we're doing on the broadcasting side that I think is going to create a lot of excitement. You know, one of the things that you mentioned, not to get off on a tangent, but, but one of the things that you mentioned was how are you going to attract contributors or creators? giving people the opportunity, telling people, telling a creator, oh, I'll put you on YouTube versus telling them I could put you on national television. Those are two different, you know, everybody oh. wants their 15 minutes of fame. Yeah. I think that's gonna be a very attractive aspect to what we're doing, that part of it. Now I haven't gone into detail on the television side and I don't wanna get too stuck in the weeds as I'm, you know, the core is this, decentralized platform, but um, giving people the opportunity to get on television, um, I think is going to be a lot. There's a lot of excitement around that. I think we're raising that capital for the TV side in, um, in the Middle East. Um, this capital will be um, um, directly focused on the platform, um, the build out the finalization in the build out of that platform. So it's um, very, it's a very focused and cost effective plan that we're putting in place um, to complete this. But yes, um, super helpful. So it's, uh, there's a, a public entity, there's, uh, you know, which comes with benefits and that, you know, the stock value could go up or that there's already a, 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 a basis for disclosure and public disclosure and that sort of thing. Um, yes. And so I think it's, uh, you know, very directly to the, the, the attendees here is the best thing to do is get on the phone with, with you and, and dig a little deeper and see uh, whether the opportunity is to make sense for them. And uh, of course you don't want anybody. So you also have to be discerning with the investors, but uh, uh, I think that, if that's okay with you, we'll just make sure everybody had a way to get get in touch with you. Yes, that that would be if we could um, devise some sort of mechanism to do that. That would be great. Happy yeah. to sh share. Phil, my Phil we're really easy. We're going to send you the list. <laughs> okay. Yeah. So, uh, all right. So we have to wrap it up, but this has been super helpful. Really appreciate you guys being on here. Does Does anybody want to put the last few comments? Uh, before we uh, wrap things up. We have a bunch of questions we didn't get to, by the way, but you guys will be able to answer them, you know, once uh, we send you all the, the, the questions. Right. So, um, so to the group, we're, we're going to be uh, talking more about blockchain TV and having Brian, Sharon and Phil uh, in a week or so, we'll uh, alert everybody to the date. And then I uh, encourage you, if there's anybody that you know that would benefit from hearing what you heard today and then get further into the weeds, we'll be doing this uh, Family Office Insights webinar again with these folks and uh, dig a little deeper and, and uh, um, you know, uh, obviously uh, give you the opportunity to learn more about exactly what's going on. So. This is super great, guys. Thanks so much. Brian, it's always good to see you, Sharon. Nice to meet you. And Phil, thank you for sharing all that with us. Super cool stuff. Yes. Um, thank you very much for organizing. I know there's a, a lot to chew on here um, in a short period of time. But uh, as Arthur mentioned, I mean, this is um, top priority for me personally and for the team. Happy to get on a call at any point in time, 24-7. This is... Um, um, very, um, very exciting and uh, happy to walk um, you through 
and answer any questions that you have at your convenience. Awesome. So and Martin, I, uh, thank you. You're very welcome, Brian. Sharon, thanks for being here. Uh, Everybody nice to meet you. So as I always say, folks, thank you for sharing with us. The only thing you can't make more of, and that's your time. So till next time, stay, stay, stay tuned, and we'll let you know when the next one is. Great. Great. Thank, thank you again. Thank you. Bye-bye. Well,